Langham Brewery, LSD. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've just raided the fridge and I'm left with a load of British beer, which I am not complaining about, I have to say, and I'm gradually working my way through it. I've just tried the Fuller's 2020 Vintage Ale and it's probably one of the best beers I have tried, certainly this year, and it could well be a contender for last year as well. On the British side of things, really nice stuff and this stuff is <laughs> i don't know how i'm going to follow it up or how they're going to follow it up but it was one of the beers that i bought from it wasn't beers of europe it was another company and i don't think i have the paperwork or have i got the paperwork oh, i've got so much shit in this room is it this one bear with me bear with me um, was it this one? No, it wasn't that one. What's this one? No, it wasn't that one either. I don't know, I got it from somewhere, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and I just like the look of it. I looked, I looked at the ingredients and I thought, this is the kind of stuff I'm into when it comes to British beer, quite malt heavy. And what, else intrigued me about this brewery, the Langham Brewery, is they're based in Sussex, the home of Brighton. Now, you know my views on that fucking dump. I hate the place, can't stand it. Nothing against the people, but fuck me, I hate it. It reminds me of all the bad things about London, especially the fucking traffic wardens. Bastards, they're like vultures. And <laughs> yeah, Needless to say, I have been the victim of them a couple of times. I just don't like the place. I just, honestly, I've just got an aversion to the place. Shit beach, traffic wardens are bastards, it's expensive, and the weather's shit, and pff, yeah, the, oh, the, the breakfasts are fucking crap and all. So yeah, Brighton, fuck off. Anyway, <laughs> this lockdown's doing things to me, I'll tell you. But we've got this, Langham Brewery LSD. Now it's called LSD because it's the Langham Special Draft. Nothing to do with the drugs, despite what you see on the label. Can you see that? Fucking hell, kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Said the man who's never done drugs in his life. That could be true. That could be a lie. You'll never know. Anyway. Uh, they're quite interesting. All joking aside, this are quite, these lot are quite an interesting brewery. They're in the middle of nowhere in Sussex and they've got an old 17th century barn which they're using. And I'll tell you what, if you look at the pictures, I'll put a picture up here. It looks the part. Obviously they haven't been going that long. I think they've been going since 2005. But I like what they do. They're into their real ale and they haven't been swept up in the, the craft beer craze of just throwing loads of American hops into a beer and calling it an IPA and hoping for the best. They look like they actually have a care about what they brew. And this is what turned me on to them because this one looked really good. And I've seen on the website, I've seen the other stuff that they do and it's in the same sort of vein. It's very much sort of English type beer oriented. And to be honest, that's what I like about a brewery who, who are carrying on that tradition. I'm like a fucking broken record here talking about how much I worry about the state of British beer at the moment where everybody just seems to want to call, call their beers IPAs, etc. And stuff like bitters and 
traditional English IPAs and traditional English pale ales are like a, you know, a, a bad word. They're like a taboo, if you know what I mean. And I know brewers have to make money and they, they have to employ certain marketing techniques and tactics, but I, I can sort of see through a lot of that and it, it does wind me up when I, I can sort of spot a brewer that's trying to sell a white elephant, if you know what I mean. But rant over. I will stop there. Let's get onto the beer. Right, this is a 5.2% 500ml bottle of Draft Ale, as far as I can see. It doesn't say what it is, what style of beer. It says water, malted barley, wheat and yeast are the ingredients and several hop varieties. There was no brew sheet on the website, so I can't give you that information. They're in Lodsworth, which is in West Sussex. So that's bordering on Hampshire, from what I can work out. And not really much to say. Oh, here we go. An Auburn beer with rich, with rich complex flavors and a deep red glow. The sweet maltiness is maltiness. <laughs> Maltiness. I've just had an 8.5% full as vintage ale. You've got to cut me a squeeze here. Might get me words mixed up. Uh, the sweet maltiness is balanced with spicy hop, hop, hop aromas. <laughs> spicy hop aromas and a dry finish. Definitely a pint of savour. Yeah, and they've won quite a few awards as well. Yeah, sorry, did I say 17th century? It's, uh, it says, look here. It says, based in an 18th century granary barn in the picturesque village of Lodsworth. Langham Brewery nestles in the beautiful South Downs. Yeah, we've got the North Downs where we are, and they're amazing. The South Downs are, they're, they're what they call in the United Kingdom an area of outstanding natural beauty. Now they've got some of them up in the People's Republic of Yorkshire, namely the Pennines, and when, when they get called that, they generally are an area of outstanding natural beauty and the South Downs are no different. Um, what have we got here? Uh, well known locally, the brewery has gone from strength to strength, always securing more than 25 awards for its traditional cask and traditional owls. Already, not always. Jesus Christ, and do you know what? I'm fighting the urge to get a big fuck off Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass to try and read some of this shit because I am getting fucking more blind by the day. I see an article on the BBC website that lockdown is doing something to people's eyesight because they're just fucking glued to computers and stuff. And I do that for a living. I've been doing that now for, since I gave up the building trade, I've been doing that now for what, nearly 10, no, 20 years. So there you go. Anyway. Let's stop ranting about my ailments and let's get this beer open. Right, the cap is just plain black. Nothing to see there. Let's get in the glass. Now, I have got the dishwasher going. I think the dishwasher's fucked. The saga of the dishwasher, I think I'm gonna have to get a new one. So I'm using this Guinness Guinness tankard that I got for my 50th and it's coming quite handy actually I haven't used it in a while so this is the first time in about six months that I've put some beer into it so if it's dirty not my circus not my monkeys Jesus Christ you've ruined that ain't you the size of that head that has got a head like Birkin head oh that smells nice that does smell good Bit of toffee malt on that, very sweet toffee malt, and that could potentially be crystal malt. Mmm, and some very nice hop character. Getting big earth coming from that as well. Earth and spice. Mmm, that does look promising, and it smells promising as well. The head does not look promising though. much we got left in here. I'll tell you what, I'll leave that in there. 
and I'll give this a go because that head doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So look at that, that's quite murky. And I was talking the other day about ruby ales and how how much of a, a crossover that style of beer is. You know, there's times when beers get called ruby ales when they are effectively a bitter. And this smells, they haven't called it a bitter, but it does smell like a really good. Well, I'm saying that. It does smell sweet. Mm. Anyway, let's stop guessing. Let's stop gassing and let's get this down the hatch. Bottoms up. Oh, that is sweet. Blimey. It's really sweet. Oh, but the bitterness. Oh. That really is a tale of two beers. Very, very sweet on the palate. And then all of a sudden, on the finish, you get that big British hop character. <laughs> That really is going from one extreme to the other. Mmm. Cool. Finish on that is bitter. But it's super sweet on the palate. <laughs> and the fact that it's really that sweet it does make me wonder whether this has had stuff added to it to make it that sweet not invert sugar but like a I don't know some sort of syrup maybe I'm not complaining because it is quite nice and if it didn't have that finish I would be a bit Mm, this is a little bit too sweet. It tastes a little bit artificial, but the the bitter finish on the arse end balances all that out. Well, that, that is really nice. Really good mouthfeel, and the head retention is really good. I have to say, I'm impressed with that. Now, I did give it a little bit of an aggressive pour, but that has kept its its head quite well. And it looks really good too. It looks like a, a really good ruby ale. Really malty on the palate, I have to say. And it's big caramel malt. But that, what really makes this good is that late, late bit of finish. It's really nice. It reminds me of the Bolton Alt beer because that was very similar. It had a quite a sweet mouthfeel, but the bitterness on the arse end made it made it quite nice and i love that that's probably one of the best out beers i've tried this stuff you know this is an unknown brewery in britain and it's as good if not better than the best german out beer so i can see why out beer is not that popular in germany but this is nice i do like this Oh, that is really good. Wow. Getting a bit of toffee malt now on that as well. God, the finish on this, it really, <laughs> I can't emphasize how much that is sweet initially, and then the bitterness comes in from the hops. 
that's real pepper, black pepper, bitterness, if you can imagine that. Coupled with that sweet malt, it just balances itself out really well. And I'm liking this, as you can see. <laughs> Yeah, really good. I'm going to put that down because I am so tempted to drink this, to just polish that off. Really good. Really impressed with that. So what's the verdict on Langham Brewery LSD? That's really nice. Now, I picked this beer because I like the look of it, I like the ingredients, and I liked what the description said about it. I've been caught out so many times by these descriptions and it's really disappointing when you sort of psych yourself up for a, a really good malty type British beer with a lot of you know bitterness on the arse end and just generally good beer and you can get let down by the description. They can talk a good fight but they can't deliver. I'll tell you something, this lot, they're they really are putting a smile on my face because that beer does taste really nice and they're only small this lot and I imagine around the locality they're quite big and it's a shame that this isn't making its way further out because it really is good I have to say some of these you know I'm not, I might knock Sussex and all that for its breweries but I might knock Sussex because it contains a place called Brighton. But I'll tell you something, there are breweries there that are pumping out some fantastic beers and this is one of them. This is great. I really like it. The malt is massive on this in the palate. The malt is massive on this on the palate and then as it goes down the finish is all about the hops and the whole lot just balances itself out after that. Love it. Brilliant. For me, I was just about to take another mouthful. I just realised how much I've drunk of it, but fuck it. Yeah, oh, that's so good. Um, I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. And the reason I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10 is... Why am I not going to give it a 10 out of 10? No, I am. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I didn't want to give it a 9 out of 10 because I was thinking of the Cotley stuff and I'm thinking, is it as good as that? And I think it is. I really do think it is. It's That's at the perfect temperature. It's come out of the fridge, the room's quite warm. It's roughly chilled, I would say, bordering on cellar temperature. And I'm getting all them big flavours. And it really is good. Very drinkable too. The mouthfeel is superb. So yeah, Fuck it, you're getting a 10 out of 10 for that. That is really good. I'm really impressed with that. Now I looked at the label and I thought oh, they're obviously just playing on the um, the drug thing with that, but I don't care. They could they could have put anything on the label. If I'd have tasted that beer with I don't know a Millwall flag on it, I've still said it's a good beer. And for me, that is saying something. Being a West Ham fan, but yeah, really nice. Impressed. 10 out of 10, Langham Brewery. I'm going to buy some more of your stuff on the strength of that, so don't let me down. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>